In this video, we're going to look at finding the number of atoms for a molecule or compound. And we're going to start out with the most important concept. That's the idea of subscripts. So when we're counting up the number of atoms for a molecule, we need to know what these subscripts mean here. So here's our water molecule. It's H2O. We have two H's and one O. So the subscript here, this two, this means we have two hydrogen atoms, one, two. For the oxygen, we don't have anything written, but we assume there to be a one there. So we have one oxygen atom, and here it is, right here. So the subscripts, these numbers here, refer to the element in front of them. They tell us the number of elements we have of that type. There's nothing written, we assume there to be a one. So to find the number of atoms in the water molecule, we can say H, the hydrogen, we have two of those because of the subscript. Oxygen, we have just the one. If you add these up, three total atoms in the water molecule. So pause and find the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms in CH4 methane, and then find the total number of atoms for the methane molecule, CH4. So for CH4, the carbon, the one, it's not there. We assume it to be there. We have one carbon, hydrogen, we have four hydrogen atoms. And if we add it all up, one plus four, five total atoms, for CH4. But what if we have a compound with parentheses? Something like calcium hydroxide. So to find the number of atoms here, we know we have one calcium, and then within these parentheses, one oxygen and one hydrogen. So calcium, we have one of those. And then this two here, it applies to everything. Kind of think of the parentheses as enclosing the entire OH here. So for the oxygen here, we have one of those, but we multiply it by the two outside the parentheses, two oxygen atoms. Same thing for the hydrogen. We have one hydrogen. We're going to multiply that by two. That gives us two. One plus two plus two. We have five total atoms for CaOH2, calcium hydroxide. What if we have a number in front of the formula? We have a coefficient like two in front of the formula. Let's talk about that. So we know what our subscripts mean. They tell us how many of the element symbol in front we have. And the coefficient tells us that we have two separate water molecules. So there are two ways we could do this. So we could figure out the number of atoms in H2O and multiply it by two, or we could do this all at once. So for the hydrogen, we could say hydrogen, we have two times two. That would give us four. The oxygen, we have one times the two. That would give us two. And if we added these all up, the total number of atoms here in 2H2O would be four plus two. It would be six. So the coefficient in front, that big number there, tells us how many molecules we have. So pause and figure out how many magnesium, nitrogen, and oxygen atoms we have, and then how many total atoms we have represented here. So you could figure this out just for one magnesium and then multiply everything by two, and that would work. You could also do it all at once. It would give you the same answer. It might be a little quicker. Let's try that. So let's write our ones in just so we're aware that they're there. So magnesium, one times two. We have two magnesium atoms. Then it gets a little more complicated. For the nitrogen, we have one nitrogen times this two here. This two here goes to everything. So one times the two, and then we need to multiply that by the coefficient out here, because this coefficient, it goes to everything. So one times two times two, that's two times two is four. Four nitrogen atoms. For the oxygen, we have two times this two out here times our coefficient, two. So two times two is four times two, eight oxygen atoms. If we add all of this up, 8 plus 4 plus 2, we have a total of 14 atoms in the 2Mg NO2-2. This is magnesium nitrite. This is Dr. B finding the number of atoms in molecules and compounds. Thanks for watching.